Welcome to the uh, meeting of the Libertarian Alliance. We meet uh, this third uh, Tuesday of the month. Uh, and um, this week is myself speaking. Uh, our normal chairman isn't here for some reason or other. And uh, I'm speaking on uh, liberalism and Islam. Now, uh, liberalism uh, is a matter of degree. Uh, I don't think it's, uh, it's uh, mutually exclusive. Uh, it is a matter of tolerance of other people's lifestyles and other people. And, uh, it's a live and let live sort of outlook. Uh, now, it did uh, make its appearance on the political stage. Uh, it did make its appearance on the, on the uh, political stage. But basically, uh, you know, the Libertarian Alliance, of course, is a, uh, an alliance between uh, liberty status and, uh, and anarcho-liberals. And basically, the anarcho-liberal side of it have come to the conclusion, rejected by the other side, of course, that liberalism is basically an anti-politics. In other words, politics itself is, to some extent, uh, illiberal. But basically there are, there are various socialist groups, and some of these socialist groups are more liberal than others. Uh, now, liberalism uh, related to uh, religion is a bit like science related to religion. Science uh, will uh, ignore religion uh, but or want uh, the uh, members who contribute towards the science to ignore uh, religion as well. In other words, uh, science uh, welcomes anyone of any religion uh, as long as they keep their religion out of the science. Now, in a sense, liberalism does exactly the same thing uh, to, to uh, religion. Uh, any religion is welcome, complete, the, uh, complete uh, religious freedom is welcome, and in fact it's... Uh, even a dogma of liberalism that there should be complete religious freedom. Um, but uh, you mustn't impose your religion on other people. Now, by impose, we mean forcefully impose. We don't mean to try to convert them. Uh, you know, the Catholics have wanted to convert everyone on earth, although when the Jesuits uh, almost converted the whole of China, uh, the Catholic Church uh, expelled the Jesuits for <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, didn't, they, didn't, they suddenly didn't want to try and become part of the Roman Catholic Church for reasons best known to themselves. So there is always a contrast between, or there is often, always perhaps is too strong a word, there is often a contrast between avowed principles and practice in almost anything. Um, uh, and uh, so uh, the Catholic Church wasn't so universal when, it, when uh, Francis Xavier almost uh, was on the verge of bringing over China, certainly converted the elite, and uh, he would have uh, had a very good uh, chance of converting the, 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 uh, the people of China. Uh, because religion, uh, contrary to uh, common sense, is really a sociological phenomenon rather than a psychological phenomenon. Now, of course, there's a brilliant book written by William James called Variety of Religious Experience. Uh, and um, if you haven't read it, I recommend you do read it, or any book by William James if it comes to that. Uh, but certainly his principles of psychology is worth reading. James is a good author, of, uh, a philosopher and a psychologist at the tail end of the 19th century. His brother was Henry James, who wrote novels. And his novels, are, actually the novels are hard to read, but uh, the uh, psychology books and the philosophy books are very easy to read. So some of which said, uh, James writes like a novelist. Uh, you know, uh, William uh, writes like a novelist, and Henry James writes uh, like an uh, abstruse scientist. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, uh, Henry James is. I haven't read much of Henry James's stuff, and uh, he's a hard read. I should imagine he is. Yes, as I've just said. Yeah, as I've just said, really, he's a. Yeah, he's he's a hard whereas William James is an easy read. So his brother on psychology and on the variety of religious experiences, which I recommend, is easy to read. Now this variety of religious experiences really, is really about the origins of Christianity. I should imagine it's a psychological phenomenon that the origins of Christianity, for example, the, the life of Muhammad or the life of Jesus, uh, if either of those existed, uh, the historians have cast doubt on both of them, 
Uh, however, uh, if they did exist, and yeah, the Buddha and so on, that will be a psychological matter, whereas the, the, when they become an establishment, it becomes a sociological matter. And so we, although uh, belief, especially in the uh, Judeo-Christian world, especially in the Christian world, belief really is very often is synonymous with religious belief. You know, are you a believer? You know, uh, you, uh, it's thinking in terms of it. In fact, religion isn't very much believed at all, but it is highly valued. Now, why is it valued? Um, mainly because it's uh, because of what it's uh, done on the way, really. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things. You know, uh, the, uh, the Christian religion is 2,000 years old. The Jewish religion is much older. Uh, believing older than that is the Indians and other religions. Uh, now, all of those are young in comparison with the things that they have come to uh, dominate. For example, all of those are way younger than marriage. All of those are way younger than morals. However, people think that religion is the custodian of morals because religion has uh, uh, done what is analogous to nationalisation. It has churchified or uh, made sacred morals, marriage and so on. Uh, these old institutions that existed long before religion. Uh, and so, uh, basically, uh, for, there are, um, we have uh, uh, various people, some people are keener on religion than others, but for the vast masses, uh, religion is a bit like a uh, Christian, uh, well, I shouldn't say Christian because it reminds me of the old joke, what's the most common Christian name in, uh, in the UK, but well, it's Mohammed. <laughs> so I made that mistake when I said Christian name, a four name I should have said. Um, uh, very, people uh, rarely change their forename and their surname, uh, and they rarely change their religion as well. And uh, in fact, most people don't think too much seriously about their forename and their surname. Uh, of course, uh, ladies uh, uh, do change it, change it on marriage. That's a, uh, an established custom. Uh, but uh, you, uh, apart from that, you actually change it by default, very few. And very few people convert to another religion. The vast masses uh, support religion uh, in a sort of alienated sort of support. Uh, now, uh, I want to deal in this part, we're talking, about generally, general, talking generally about what religion is, uh, with my own experience with Catholicism, because I want to uh, argue from that by analogy to what the vast majority of Muslims may be. Um, uh, now, I was uh, brought up as a Catholic, and uh, I didn't particularly like going to church very much of a Sunday, uh, but one thing that got people to church of a Sunday was the idea um, that if you didn't church, uh, attend church on a Sunday, it was a mortal sin. And this was on par with murder. <laughs> so therefore, then, if you want to be as wicked enough to be a uh, to be a murderer, you would uh, you would go to church on a Sunday. Now, uh, yes, it is part of that. Now, um, there are a, a number of Islamic scholars have said, not one, but a number of Islamic scholars have said that if it wasn't for the uh, uh, law of killing people, they leave. Islam, then Islam wouldn't exist at all. Um, now, whether, whether that's right or not, I don't know. Uh, but uh, it, it, uh, it is a, a sort of compulsion to remain Islam if once you're born into it, or if you've been converted to it. Uh, and you have a, a, a similar, a softer compulsion perhaps with Catholicism of attending church. Now, uh, in the 50s, in the 1950s, when I was a little lad, um, Catholics went to church, but the church in England didn't. <laughs> they didn't go to church. Uh, and uh, many Protestant sects didn't uh, go to church. They were going to enthusiastic Protestant sects. But right, right. if you're a Muslim woman, you don't really get the choice, do you? Uh, you always have the choice. Uh, uh, you know, uh, if, I, if you put me under duress, you haven't removed my choice. 
I, I, I know I, brother, but, but you're, you're, you're quite right. That, you're, 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 you're sort of married or you know. You're quite, you're quite right that there is, there, there, there is. They, they are subservient to the male species. Yeah. There, there, there what is. we normally do is we have the, the talk and then we have the question. And okay. Answer. Fair, fair. There, there, there is, there is a lot, a lot of, of duress uh, involved in religion, and yeah. some of this is. Uh, a matter of ideas, like the idea that it's a sin on your soul if you miss Mass on Sunday. Another is more uh, uh, outright coercion, I suppose. If you uh, uh, leave Islam, that you probably and you're in an Islamic country, don't, they may well kill you. Uh, so uh, that, that's uh, even to more stringent dress. But what I was going to say is this: uh, I was. Uh, Pretty indifferent to this religion myself, speaking personally, it's Catholicism that I'm talking about. And um, then uh, when I was about 14, I met an atheist who uh, put forward a few arguments and, they, and he got me thinking about it. And I, did, I didn't think about it, all, you know, I didn't need to think about it all that long. I, I more or less formed the basic idea that he, that he was right. So I happened to have a, uh, a highly tolerant uh, religious instruction teacher at school who, who uh, and of course he was teaching an apathetic class, and uh, he, and I became an enthusiast in the class. And so we used to have arguments, and I learned more in a few weeks than I'd had done in the previous ten years about Catholicism. And uh, I also knew more than everyone else in the class, apart from Ozan, who was the who was the actual teacher. And uh, so we went back and forwards, and sometimes I uh, put forward those and stronger arguments to my atheist friend, who counted them for me. And, so it's kind of like a, a big debate that I had with him, uh, and uh, so that was quite. I became interested in religion as soon as I found that it was false, um, and uh, it, it, it was. Uh, but I didn't become tremendously interested, uh, tremendously interested in it. But I became interested enough to argue with people. Now uh, there are there are uh, in, a, in a, uh, there is a, almost a, like a sociological law really that the, the bigger the denomination, uh, the uh, fewer the, the less most adherents know about the creed, uh, but the stronger are their experts who actually specialise in it. So if you take a big organisation or a comparatively big organisation like the Communist Party, you'll find that most of their members don't know very much at all about communism. Uh, but the elite will know a lot about communism. Whereas if you take some little Trotskyite group, you'll find that all the members will know quite a bit about Trotskyism, but they'll have no real expert. So, uh, and that seems to go with religion as well. Uh, you know, the bigger the religion, the, uh, the more the uh, individuals on the rank of file know virtually nothing about it, but the elite know more about it. And uh, the small of the religion, like Jehovah's Witnesses, just Dolphins, no little sex, nearly everyone knows quite a lot about the religion, but they're not, they're not completely expert at it. Uh, they have no real, well they might have the odd expert, but they'll be lucky to have an expert that can match, for example, a Catholic or uh, you know, one of the big Lutheran churches. So that's almost like a law that, 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 that seems to operate through groups. The smaller the group, the more uh, knowledge is diffuse, but the elite aren't, so, aren't usually so good. They can be a good, you can get a... I mean, Faraday, for example, was uh, in a, uh, a Sandinistian a Christian sect. I should have actually knew quite a bit about religion as well, know quite a bit about uh, chemistry and uh, physics. And he certainly was a very bright man, so you get really bright. We want to write the name of of Science, Michael Faraday. So you get very bright people uh, in these small sects, you can get them. Um, uh, but uh, uh, generally speaking, uh, you know, the smaller the sect, the less expertise the elite will have, uh, if they have an elite at all. And uh, the bigger the sect, the more. Uh, so, um, so basically, I. I um, I think the state of Catholicism then is that mo uh, I, I, uh, most people at school were indifferent to uh, you know, me and Azam was interested in religion and the rest of the class wasn't. And outside in the other classes, the other forms, most of them were just uh, indifferent to religion. Now undoubtedly some of them might, might have had some uh, phrases where they went through a pious phrase, 
by myself at the Food and Pirates Place when I was nine, uh, and uh, it lasted about three months. Uh, you know, uh, I think that's more or less typical. You know, the, 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 but basically, people support religion because they think there's something good in it, just like they support the state because they think there's something good in it. Uh, now, whether there is something good in religion or there is something good in the state, I'll leave open at this stage. Um, I tend to say, you might gather that from my tone that I tend to think not. But still, I'll leave it there open. Now, uh, so I think religion, so, so I think the masses are like that in any religion, including Islam. Now, Islam claims to be a religion of peace. Now, for the first 10 years, it undoubtedly was a religion of peace. Now, again, anything that we say about it, I mean, and this Islam has in common with Christianity, there is the theology of it and the text, the sacred text and the theology of both uh, Christianity and Islam, uh, and there is the history of it, and they don't have to meet uh, in fact, you'll find that many of the texts of the four Gospels that are in the canon, or there's about 400 outside the canon, uh, all of those texts will not be solely concerned with history, they'll also be concerned to make various theological points. Uh, and this is the same with the Quran. It's not solely concerned with the history of Muhammad, it's also concerned to make certain theological points, and this is totally and utterly normal. Uh, so there's a difference between theology and history. Uh, a bit like, you could say, literature generally, you know, the, uh, the War of Peace has got a lot of history in it, but its history might, not, you know, uh, might, might, might not be so good from, a, from an historian's point of view. You know, it's, it's basically a work of literature, not a work of history. So, um, so basically, the, uh, I now give a, a very potted uh, history of extremely part of the history of, of Islam, and we can go into it in detail in the, in the question time, if you uh, and, and that's this. Uh, now, this is uh, something, all, all, both Christianity has been questioned, uh, it was questioned before the 19th century, but it's uh, it quite questioned in the 18th century, in the 17th century, you see Thomas Hobbes in, uh, in Leviathan, the second half of Leviathan, uh, questions Christianity a great deal, and uh, says that Moses is a myth, uh, that Moses never existed, uh, and, uh, then, and, and a few other characters never existed as well. So that's, uh, but, but when it came to the 19th century Germany, young guy did it, and it's Furbach and uh, David Strauss and people like that, uh, the older guy did it, David Strauss, uh, they really put through um, Christianity through the mill, and they started doubting whether Jesus existed at all. And these writings were translated by the lady uh, called Mary Ann Evans, who called, wrote under the name George Eliot, who wrote Middle March and so on. And she, uh, most of her work was done on religion. It was translating Furbach and David Strauss and these people from the German into the uh, English. And this caused uh, you know, a fiore uh, in, in England. Well, of course, they'd had plenty of it in the 18th century themselves. You know, the whole life of Joseph Street is just nothing but a questioning. Of, of the, all the tenets of Christianity, you know, the Unitarians, I mean, and, uh, are a bit like the Muslims. They, they say that uh, Jesus is just a man, and nothing whatsoever to do with the Son of God, a special Son. He's the Son of God, like with all sorts of God. You could say, but no, he's not a special Son of God. And the Unitarians, let's name, let's name a few Unitarians, and you'll see how influential they are. Isaac Newton was a Unitarian. John Locke was a Unitarian. Joseph Priestley, of course, was a Unitarian. And uh, the fourth one here, those three are good enough. Oh, I've forgotten the fourth one, it's in my mind. Uh, but he's influential. Sidney Smith. Yeah, but he's not in the same class as those three I've, I've just named out, I think. Um, there's, a four, there's a fourth one, but he, he, his name escapes me. Um, anyhow, those three Hobbes. I mentioned Hobbes, Newton, Locke, and Priest. Oh, Hobbes is the other one. Hobbes is a Unitarian. Yes, he's known, I mean, Hobbes is known as an atheist, but all of these Unitarians come over as atheists. In fact, uh, when Priestley applied for a job, um, he was turned down on religious terms, and the man uh, employed the uh, upfront atheist, Jeremy Bentham, instead. And he said, why? 
He says, well, I have less trouble on religious terms from Bentham than I have from you. <laughs> so, you, know, you see, because Unitarians are interested in Christianity, whereas Bentham is, he wants to write it down, but he doesn't want to go into too much detail. And the Unitarians will go into every detail and, and talk for it for as long as you like. But, of course, so most of these, uh, so Islam arose then, uh, and, I mean, let me just finish this historical point off. The historians say that it, there might be nothing to this. Uh, and they say that about Christianity and about Islam. Uh, what they, what, on Islam they say, uh, the first, it's 1400 years, but the first 200 years, so they say it's really 1200 years, the first 200 years there's no sign of Islam, they say. Uh, the first 200 years no one could fall to Israel, uh, to Islam. The first 200 years there was churches built with trusses on which wouldn't have been allowed after the first 200 years. Uh, then they start questioning whether it was uh, to do with Mecca. They said it talks about olive trees, there's no olive trees near Mecca. They said it talks about being near to uh, the uh, original place of Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, Mecca is far, far further than that. Uh, then they have a look at the, uh, the way how the people uh, point towards when they're questioning the, uh, their prayer. And they say, uh, uh, well, all these uh, uh, pointers of uh, direction of prayer are to a place called Petra, which was uh, uh, completely and utterly uh, destroyed, a bit like Pompeii, by a volcano. It's now, you know, in rock and so on, uh, and uh, it had to be deserted. They reckon that uh, Petra was probably where the original Islamic text was uh, read by Muhammad or someone else. So that's the story. I'm going to, apart from picking it up, we're going to ignore it now and take the actual, um, take the actual uh, religious thing or the sacred thing as 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 gospel. Bad job there. Uh, and uh, so I'm um, uh, so I'm going to say uh, for the first for the first twelve years, then Muhammad was under the protection of his uncle, and indeed it was the religion of peace. Although Muhammad himself, according to this story. Um, was uh, a bit petulant and not very tolerant of, of, of his rivals and, uh, and they, all of his rivals in Mecca uh, feared him and they feared him so much that they repeatedly offered to buy him out uh, if he stopped preaching and leave them uh, to, to uh, go on with their uh, poly, uh, uh, polyglot uh, polytheism. Polytheism, and, uh, polytheism and their many gods and uh, especially what it means and, and their, their traditional worship, because they feared that he would do away with that, and they feared that uh, Mecca, which was uh, a fairly uh, prosperous religious uh, place, would become uh, barren under uh, Islam. Eventually, of course, Islam was so popular that they thought it was better than, you know, they, they eventually thought, it was better than the uh, original powers they got for polytheism, uh, you know, the powers for Islam. So eventually they overcome that, but they were doubtful about it for a long time. But anyway, they, he was petulant, but he was certainly the religious peace he used persuasion to win them over. And uh, he didn't win all that many over, but he won a lot, and they were frightened that he'd win a lot of them over. I often noticed on the building site that everyone in the building site, the house was up on the building site, was frightened to hell of the Jehovah's Witnesses. And uh, I wasn't, of course, I used to argue with them. But uh, I used to think to myself, you won't be converted, you know, because I find that they might be converted, you see. But uh, I thought, well, the fact that you're frightened of being converted is a good, you know, good reason to think that you won't be converted. But still, they were frightened of them. And, and I suppose these were frightened of man in the same way. They were frightened that you'd convert them, you see. And so it fits. So um, it sort of fits uh, what might be a reality, even if, even if it's not, not true. So. Um, what happened is that his, his, his uncle, who was protecting him, died. His wife died in the same year, and he, uh, he married twice. Uh, he'd been faithful to the one wife. He married twice uh, a, a widow and a six-year-old. And um, uh, he, then he, um, he moved to... Uh, he had one or two visits, of, uh, one visit from a crowd of uh, Yap, of, uh, another eventually Grand Medina. Uh, trying to uh, uh, win him over as a judge in their city because they had five tribes there, according to the story. 
and uh, three is twice as Jewish and two is twice as uh, Arabic. Uh, and um, they, uh, or pagan, you might say, or heathen. Uh, and um, yes, but the Jews were Arabic. But as well, but, so they're all Arabic, I suppose. But anyway, uh, the story is, is that uh, they came back in force later on and uh, persuaded them to go and the uh, and he was also pursued by the uh, Meccans and he, he made the escape uh, by tricking the, uh, the Meccans who was out to punish him in some way or other. Now he no longer had his uncle's protection. And, you know, during the time when he did have his uncle's protection, his other uncles presented this contest story. So now he died and when the other uncles had taken over, and none of the other uncles were favourable to him. They thought he'd been spot uh, in the first ten years. So um, I thought he was a menace. So um, he had to move, and he, he left uh, his adopted son Ali in, in his bed, and uh, moved uh, up towards uh, Medina or Yatib. Uh, and uh, they they didn't harm Ali, but they fired him, and he lost them by hiding in a cave. And eventually he got to there, and eventually they accepted him in this new city in Medina, and uh, they. Uh, had him as the uh, judge and he put forward the new constitution now they boast, it, it's not a boast that this is the first constitution in the history of mankind it's uh, certainly one of the earlier constitutions they say uh, now uh, this constitution which not many people have been able to find much of it but nevertheless uh, part of the story is that this constitution certainly existed uh, and uh, this constitution uh, uh, was about these five tribes and three of them were Jewish now eventually um, now the Jews in Mecca have been friendly towards uh, Mahomet because he called himself a prophet and prophet is sort of a Jewish idea and indeed there's no doubt about it that uh, if you want to say that Judaism and Christianity are Western religions then Islam is also a Western religion there's no doubt about it it's the same sort of roots the, 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 uh, the, uh, the Jewish religion is the parent religion and Islam and Christianity are sibling religions this, Christianity is the older sibling, <coughs> and um, Islam is the new sibling. Now, they did have a, Muhammad did, and Muhammad did have, and Islam does have a dogma, a big dogma here, perhaps the main dogma of, 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 of Islam, and that is, later is better. What says last, carries all weight before this. Now, um, before too long, he, uh, the Jews in Medina criticised Islam, uh, criticised Muhammad, and he didn't like it. And so he fell out with them. And he, he more than just fell out with them, he actually uh, said that he knew more than they knew, and that they were liars. For, he, he said, actually, they've covered up, you have covered up in the scripture the. Um, forecasts of my coming, my coming as a prophet, and you're, a li you're liars and cheats. Now, the fact that, you know, again, these, ins these uh, uh, insights of, uh, or uh, religious experiences of Muhammad are not unique to Muhammad. You know, he met the angel Gabriel in the uh, cave uh, before the move, before the, uh, when he first yeah, ten years before he had to move to Mecca. Uh, he, he met the uh, angel Gabriel, uh, Gabriel in the cage, and the, the angel Gabriel grabbed hold of him and says, recite. He said, well, I can't, I can't read. He said, I don't think he read. He says, recite. Grabbing hold of him again. He said, well, I can't read. He says, well, recite. And eventually he started reciting. Now, you could apologise for this by saying, uh, it's a bit like you know, the, uh, the letter that Dr. Johnson um, uh, wrote for a, a fellow who was completely illiterate on death row and the judge said well we thought this man was illiterate how he was written this wonderful letter and uh, Judge Johnson says well uh, the death penalty concentrates the mind <laughs> 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 and likewise the angel Gabriel grabbing grabbing hold of, his, of uh, Miami could concentrate the uh, mind well now again um, would have tried to be illiterate Mammy was a successful tradesman. Would have tried to be this. Well, actually, I did know a man, Ken Harwell, his name was. Actually, he was a, he was a liberal, very good liberal as well. 
I often wonder, he didn't read or write, but he was a tradesman, and a good tradesman in Birmingham. And um, I often, he was, and he was very articulate, but he couldn't read or write. I often wondered, if I met him, I met him when I was a liberal myself, I often wondered how I'd get on with him if I met him when I was a socialist, how I'd be back him against him. I'm not sure how to back him all that well. He certainly was good, uh, but he was illiterate. So it's quite possible that Miami could be illiterate. However, what I said earlier on is there's a difference between history and uh, theology, difference between the sacred text, and undoubtedly the, uh, it's useful to have Muhammad as being illiterate, so you can uh, say that it was inspired by God, the Quran was inspired by God. Now, uh, it, it, you also had a story that it was all inspired in one go. Well, that doesn't match the Quran itself, which shows a, a series of, uh, of um, insights, as it were, if you might call them, going over 27 years. Uh, but anyway, uh, the uh, thing is, is he soon found out that these three Jewish tribes were not Jews like him, turned mainly because they criticized him, and he called them liars and so on. And he eventually expelled them and would have nothing to do with Jews. And he, he started, he, he was making war now on the people in Mecca. And he started giving the, the, even the people in Medina uh, the opportunity of converting to Islam following him, uh, paying a special tax or dying. In other words, he saw himself in a state of war and a state of politics towards the Jews and towards the Christians and towards outsiders. And uh, this is where we have our problem because most people think that politics can be innocent. And indeed I was a member of a group that believed in democracy and thought that uh, the democratic means is a completely peaceful means. Now, it can be a non-violent means, but it's not an uncoercive means. Politics itself, as I said earlier on, as the uh, anarchist side of this the found out, is intrinsically, to some slight extent, illegal. And so, by Islam being intrinsically political, and in, in fact translating it rather neatly into being at war with outsiders, the question arises whether Christianity, is comp uh, uh, just not Christianity, Islam, is compatible with uh, liberalism. Now, of course, we don't want to do, uh, you, you know, liberals don't want to join the you know, liberals. You know, in other words, you don't have a, you know, it, 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 you, you uh, I mean, the backroom boys got President Carter to say once, uh, we used to think uh, that the proper way was to fight fire with fire, but now we realise that the correct way is with water. So you, you really, uh, if you, uh, you, and many people, I mean, house form was reported in um, one of the, uh, in, I think in the, uh, one of the weekend papers, as saying, well, if, if it's true that Stalin killed all those people, I think the end justifies the means if you could, means if you could really get communism, it would have all been worth it. Now, people used to say this to me in the 1960s, uh, but I used to reply to them, as it wasn't my own stuff, it wasn't uh, off the top of my head, it was a, uh, a, a much uh, revised and much, uh, much uh, rehearsed uh, reply. I used to say, the ends determine the means, and indeed they do, they do tend to determine the means, the ends do tend to determine the means, so you have to have a, a liberal answer to the problem of war. And it won't be war itself, otherwise it won't be an answer to the problem of war. So basically uh, we need persuasion and we need debate here. But there is a problem with Islam, and that, it's sound, and that is that it starts off on a war footing. And it is, although for the first uh, 10 years it was a religious peace, ever since the, uh, uh, the, the first 10 years, it, it, ever since uh, Medina, it has not been a religious peace, but a religion of war. Now, there was a chap uh, called, um, yeah, which I've got here, uh, in Sudan called uh, Taha, who uh, was born in 1909 and uh, was executed in 19, uh, 
1985, uh, and uh, he was a Muslim uh, enthusiast, and uh, the British locked him off uh, for a bit. But then, uh, when Saddam became um, free, he started thinking about this, and he thought, well, look, the first 10 years of Islam was a religion of peace. Why don't we, you know, now, Islam has this dogma, as I talked about earlier, and that everything that comes last comes best. So, Medina over, over, overrides Mecca. But he wanted to reverse this, and I'm afraid they accused him of appellate. Um, Apostasy. Apostasy. Beg your pardon. Apostasy. Apostasy. No, no. Apostasy. Apostasy. Yeah. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> put a comma there. But, uh, <laughs> yes, I'm sorry about that. That's my very bad pronunciation and my confusion. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, this chapter uh, proposed that you reverse this in this case, and you have the first 10 years as predominant over the uh, second 13 years of Islam, of uh, the Prophet's life. So the Mecca uh, takes... Now, uh, they, uh, they first arrested him in 1967, and then they let him off. But of course he continued to have a go at this. And they arrested him again in 1985. And uh, they did give him the chance to be a celebrated scholar and well-known chap. They didn't give him the chance to uh, repent, but he refused to repent, and so they executed him in 1985, uh, and that was in the Sudan. Now, uh, something like that has, needs to be done in order to make Islam a religion of peace, and in order to make it an ordinary religion, and as such, totally and utterly acceptable to liberalism. Uh, A couple of uh, points of information or anecdotes. Yes. Uh, it used to be said that Unitarians, after which of course the South Bay Ethical Society, the history of the South Bay Ethical Society. Is oh yeah, that was Unitarian. Yes. When uh, Unitarians were held to believe in one God. Yes. At most. <laughs> yes. Because they came so close to. Oh uh, yeah, they, they all became eighties. <laughs> Why well, I thought of Sidney Smith because was Sidney Smith was having. A, I mean, he was quite famous. Yes, uh, well, he was good. having a debate with a Catholic in the street, and um, the Catholic said to him, as a carriage went by with three people in, he said, "Look, it's as simple as that. You know, three in one." Got the, the Holy Trinity. There is a, and, and, and Sidney Smith said, Oh, no, 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 he said, What you have to show me is one person in three carriages. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know our friend Patrick. <laughs> no, unfortunately. No. Anyway. Is there anyone else who wants to say something? There's a lot, there's a lot of Muslims about. <laughs> and, half, yeah. and that's why that's why uh, we, we, we uh, that is why people don't want to criticize them <laughs> you can tell them why they're long dark beards <laughs> and, and that's just the women <laughs> um, there's a lot of Muslims about and it, it may be true that they uh, most of them are uh, don't really believe in it just the same as the, all the all the Catholics, you know, there's supposed to be a billion Catholics in the world, and yeah. very few of them. That is birth control. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Believe in it, probably even fewer Protestants believe in it. Uh, but they do, they, do, they do seem to tend to somewhat take it more seriously, uh, even if it's just for the sake of exerting cultural power. Um, and uh, just simply saying, you know, one scholar saying, well, let's, let's sort of try and just roll, roll it back a bit to to uh, Mecca rather than Medina, doesn't I can't think that's going to have much of a much of an effect. It's going to take something a lot more. Oh, well, they actually did it. I mean, if, 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 if the and they may well do it. This is this may well be. It's a bit like the uh, the second referendum, the people's vote. There's a good reason why you should never have a people's vote. Now, because uh, now it would the people's vote would make some sort of sense 
if they did what the people thought they were voting for, I mean, this is what I thought they were voting for, what Judith did, and Bob, nearly everyone I've asked has said this, perhaps it's just conforming to me. They, they said they voted to leave and they thought we'd be left by Christmas 2016. Now, if we had a left 2016, another referendum would be okay now, because we've been out for um, two years, two years plus. Um, but what happened instead is we had what no one voted for, Article 15. Uh, sorry, 15. Article 15. Oh, no, no, instead, sorry. Uh, Article 15, no one voted for that. And that's just to put you through purgatory, so you'll get to uh, one to the people's vote and voting the people's vote to remain. But, but uh, that's the article, that's the uh, design of Article 50, uh, 50 that's right. Uh, but, uh, you know, um, it, it would have made, uh, you could, if the vast majority of people did uh, revert to uh, Mecca above uh, Medina, then that will cure, that will cure the problem. They might do it, except that they've got this business of uh, of what comes later comes best. But you see, what comes later comes best isn't a, a, a non-problematic theological principle. Because if you've got a, a, an all-knowing God, why does he ever need to revise? An all-knowing all God never needs to revise. So this big dogma in Islam is in fact, uh, as in fact, uh, made out of glass, as it were. Uh, it, it's very fragile uh, because an all-knowing God, uh, and of course, and, and of course, Islamic people know this because they do say, which might come as a surprise if you haven't studied, if you haven't, if you haven't studied the text, uh, they do say that, for example, Moses was a Muslim, Adam was a Muslim. Uh, in other words, this Muslim business does go back. There is a sense in which God is all knowing, all wise. You say it again and again and again. The, and so the idea that God doesn't need to be is a, a very, very big idea in Islam. And yet, they do have this other dogma that well, you know, the latest revision carries. We, we improve it, we, have, we make it better. How can you make it better if you've got an almighty God? What does the Hadith say about the new things? What does the Hadith say about the new things? There's many Hadiths. Uh, uh, and there, there are, uh, so you, I mean, I should have said, you have the Quran, which we have a look at as the sacred book of Islam, but then there's the Hadith and the, and the, uh, and the biography of uh, Muhammad, uh, because the Quran can't be, can't make much sense of the uh, Quran without these Hadiths. But there are many of these Hadiths. The, 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 uh, the first book of Hadiths was about 900 pages, close to the pages, and they aren't always consistent with each other. And a lot of these Hadiths come from uh, Mary's favourite wife, Ayesha. So uh, uh, they, they're not they're not always all of the Hadiths aren't always aren't. You know, you're getting into the you know, you're getting into the Bible now, and you know the Bible are many different books. Some of the books don't fit at all. I mean, Ecclesiastes, for example, how is that fitting with any other book of the Bible? You know, uh, it's, it's on its own, as it were. So, the, the, I mean, it depends on what you mean by what the leaf. And what the leaf. There's many of them, and the different scholars. There's four main schools of Islam, four main law schools of Islam, like the Austrian schools of economics, schools like that. Um, I explain the, uh, so the the solution to the problem of, of Islam, as far as it is a problem, by explaining the fundamental difference between the three Abrahamic religions. I might have told one or two of you, you this before. So if um, one Jew says to another Jew, Somebody to tell you, I'm an atheist. The other Jew will say, Yeah, well, so am I. The other Jews are. They're, they're not. Don't mean, you're up, don't mean you're giving up Judaism, do you? You say, Oh, no, 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 of course not. Nothing like that. No, <laughs> bill, oh, bill, right. bill, bill like the Church of England. <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> and if one Christian says to another, He says, I have something to tell you. He says, I'm an atheist. Then the 
his fellow Christian would say, well, that's weird. I mean, I can sort of make sense of it because, you know, you believe in the world spirit, and, you know, but uh, it's a bit odd. But, you know, you're not going to give up Christianity, are you? So, oh, no. <laughs> Uh, and, but one Muslim says to another, I have something to confide in you, he says, I'm an atheist. And the other Muslim whips out a knife and says, Die, apostate scum! Now, what is the difference between these three examples? Time. That's all. Time. All religions start out uh, red hot, uh, impractical, uh, very demanding, um, and quite awful uh, things, as um, partly is explained by Ferdinand Mount and the subversive family. Uh, and they slowly liberalise. So all we have to do is wait 700 years, <laughs> and it'll all be fine. I think we should just stay here. There's not fear in. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that the, I think you're right that uh, the commercial society uh, is um, slowly eradicating all, uh, all religions. I think this is what the Rushdie affair was about. Mm. Uh, they they were frightened that. Uh, you know, Rusty was the first swallow, and this is the shape of things to come. We'll become like Christianity, which is basically a dead religion. Uh, uh, and uh, they didn't want that, and so they tried to prevent that from happening. Uh, but I think there is a difference uh, between uh, Islam and the other religions, and that is this thing of, of, of war. There is this thing of politics, and they realize, they realize the fact uh, that only liberals really realise that politics is war, politics is cold war, politics is uh, not deliberately not getting on with your fellow uh, human beings on, 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 on arbitrary political, you know, in politics it's arbitrary, you know, the Labour Party or the Conservative Party or the Liberal Democrats are completely arbitrary. But, you know, presumably, uh, you know, people, all religious people make a tremendous fuss and claim a whole load of uh, things for religion, which uh, is quite phenomenal they claim this. Uh, but uh, you know, they, no Islamic person will think that uh, Islam is arbitrary, nor will any Christian. Uh, but, uh, you know, but, but nevertheless, from, a, from the agnostic point of view. So. But what you said reminded me of the old joke that, was, uh, that became uh, popular uh, after the trouble started up in 1969 in Northern Ireland, uh, you know, where a man goes to Northern Ireland and says, well, I'm an agnostic. He says, well, what sort of agnostic are you? A Catholic agnostic or a Protestant agnostic? Some <laughs> <laughs> things that you're liable to read in the Bible and they ain't necessarily so. Oh, yeah, that's what Paul the Investor yes, yeah. Well, funnily enough, I always used to just think I was an atheist until I walked past the church and saw it being converted into a mosque. And I thought, well, God damn it, I may be an atheist, but I'm a Christian atheist. <laughs> <laughs> you should have said there is, there is a big doctrinal argument in Islam, mainly between the Sunnis and the Shias. But yes. But, but, but that, neither of them seem to be particularly palatable to liberalism. It's not, an, <laughs> it's not a doctrinal <laughs> argument. It's not a doctrinal argument at all. And they don't, well, they don't seem to come it's a bit, it's, it's a, Yes, although it's a bit like the spit in the LA. It was a spit in the LA. <laughs> and there was no doctrinal difference between the two sides. It was a matter of personalities, or one personality, I think. And sad chap is no longer with us. Um, uh, so it was a matter of, pers of one personality. And I think that this was a matter of one personality as well. What happened is that uh, shortly after, uh, according to the uh, story, you know, according to the uh, official story, shortly after uh, Mohammed moved to Medina, he lost his young wife, uh, who was then aged about, you know, well, shortly, a few years. She was then aged 12. And um, 
a man to uh, pick up, and he happened to be a man who she used to know. And talk about a six-year-old girl before he married. Before she was married, talking about a six-year-old. But anyway, the big dogma was, well, she's 12 now, um, a man who had been with this lady must have committed adultery with her. And so uh, she was condemned to be uh, put to death, stoned or something. Now, uh, Mohammed wasn't happy with this. But Ali said to her, Ali's adopted son said to her, let me stone the matter. There's plenty of women out there and you'll soon get another woman. And of course she heard this <laughs> and she didn't like it. She remembered it. She said, this, is a good, this is all the official doctrine. The Addis and so on. I mean, it's not completely by other of this. But this is the Addis and so on. And so what happened is that uh, this man, Ali, was the adopted son of Mohammed, and he definitely, Mohammed definitely had this child to be his successor. But the young lady's father was his, uh, Mohammed's best friend, and had been his best friend all along. Um, uh, Abba Bukha, Bukha. Have a baker, and um, when Mary was dead, and she died. He died in the house of his favourite wife, at the house of his wife, and he lost his uh, The time uh, the uh, he came up to who would uh, replace him as the as the first caliph, and Ayesha spoke out against Ali, and so Ali didn't become become the caliph. And uh, then uh, there's one or two caliphs, uh, they murdered each other and got into trouble and so on. And eventually Ali did become a caliph down the road, uh, being it came about the fourth or fifth caliph, I forget which, either fourth or fifth. And uh, I actually was still against him, <laughs> and spoke against him. And there was a war about on this basis. And now actually uh, Ali uh, won uh, a particular battle with uh, with uh, uh, with Ali, uh, Ali went back with uh, Ayesha's brother, and she he spared her life. He told her to spare her, but uh, but she still didn't. She still was against him, and so the the, the followers of Ali are the minority. They are in Iran. They are the uh, the uh, Shia, 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 and uh, the others are the Sunni. You have a pop group, Sonny and Shea. Reminds me of this This is really a question, it's more uh, an observation, but it's always seemed to me that it's been an absolute blessing for Western states following the fall of the Iron Curtain of the temporary period when there was no enemy. And the great thing about Islam is that it allows the state to have, to have another enemy. So now we can have a war, we can have wars on terrorism, and yes. we, can, we can have monitoring and we can make sure that you know, people have to take their shoes off when they go through airports. We can have very strict controls on, yes. on, on banking freedom to make sure that, you know, that terrorism isn't funded. Yes. And so whenever you want to do anything involving finance, now you have to fill in a thousand forms and so on and so forth. And, and you can multiply that over and over and over again. Yes. And it really does seem to me that the, by far and away the greatest damage done by Islam to liberalism is not done by Islam. It's done by the state's response, yes. which gives ammunition to all those who hark back to the yes. time when we had a war on, on, on the Soviet Union. Those days are more or less gone, so now we've got Islam instead. And it's not put that way, but the war on terrorism, the fight on terrorism, blah, blah, blah. Yes. And uh, I, I think to the extent that a threat is posed by Islam, not all of it, I think most of that threat is entirely self Yes, I, I, th I think the, the way I to counter Islam, as I said with that protest with Carter's background boys, you know, it's, it's no use uh, joining them in being anti-liberal and fighting them. You've got to counter them by reason. Uh, but you've got to get them to accept free speech now, I think. Uh, you know, most of them will. Because they, I mean, if you, if you think the truth is on your side, then you, you're pretty willing to accept free speech. And I think that's the way ahead, you know, uh, by reason rather than by, uh, by treating them um, uh, in some hostile fashion. 
because what you, in the first casualty of, uh, of war is not proof, in fact, liberalism. Liberalism dies even before the proof does. Um, and in fact, the truth is, can look after itself, really, uh, country to. Uh, I think Papa goes over the, uh, over the top when he, when he thinks that he's defending rationality in some way, or that rationality needs a defence. It seems like rationality and truth are, are innate to humans and they can look after themselves. But liberty can't, and, and people do. See, people don't. Why? You, I mean, I don't think. I, I don't think anyone does actually. I, mean, you know, I think liberalism is the top I, ideal, the top I, the idea in most people's. But what most people don't do is they don't want to do what an ally wants to do, which is to try liberalism with anti-liberal ideas. On the contrary, uh, most people have a view of. Uh, they have a. It's almost ridiculous to talk about a liberal heresy. Uh, you can't, uh, it's almost an uh, oxymoron. But if you could imagine a liberal heresy, a liberal heresy would be, because uh, you know the tolerance is the top idea of liberalism, uh, to tolerate uh, uh, and uh, to actually uh, say, uh, well, you know, there's no point in debating things at all. <laughs> one, one idea is as good as another. Uh, uh, but, 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 yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, you don't want that. But, but, if you actually react to these people uh, uh, in a war like that, then you'll be joining them. You'll be joining the anti liberal forces rather than beating them. You can only beat them by, uh, by, uh, by, uh, by reason, by ideas. By dreams, maybe. Because you have people share the dream. Dream? Yeah. Oh, dreams like that. A thought, that. you know, an ambition, a place to go to be. A story it doesn't exist, but you could. Say to people, come, take, follow me. Well, this is what this is what the great preachers did. Well, you see, I think I, no, I think I think most people, even you know, m most people have got have got the idea of liberalism for themselves and, and their immediate family at least. I have dreamed a dream. Hello. <laughs> yes, that's what Martin Luther King said. Yeah, exactly. And um, was that liberal? Did he try? To... Well, it wasn't illiberal. It wasn't illiberal. Uh, but it wasn't particularly. Uh, the musical, isn't it? Not Martin Luther King. Like no, I do the dreams from Les Misérables. Yeah. Uh, oh, he's Les Mis, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew it was a bloody musical. Martin Luther King. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I was. I was going to say that um, you, you brought up. You mentioned what you said was was the problem of, of Islam. Yes. Yeah. Well, if you step back a little bit from, from, from your, your subject, I mean, there's no special problem about Islam. I mean, it, it, it's, it's the general problem of all religions, of all of them. I mean, there's nearly 50,000 religions, uh, official religions in the UK. If you, if you double that, you, you can double that, you say the unofficial religions as well. You can say there's 100,000, approximately. Um, they're all... They're all well, if you have a minute, what's wrong? <laughs> 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 Everybody has his own religion. No, I said there's, there's nearly 50,000 yeah. official not, religions. Not 50 million. No, 50,000. 50, yes, yeah, yeah, what's, what's wrong? Have you, have you got trouble with your ears? <laughs> no, he, okay, he okay. finds it incredible. Yeah. I don't well, well, you can Google it. I mean, just, just Google it. <laughs> well, yeah, got, get, get your tablet. Uh, uh, get your tablet. Uh, 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 just get your tablet and Google it. Rick, on Google it right, right now. There's nearly 50,000 official religions in the UK. That's just the UK. Unofficially, unofficial religions. Uh, Islam is just one of the of the general problems. As far as liberalism is concerned, and libertarianism, it's one of the general problems of all religions, and and that is that if you stop any of these religious buses, get out and look under the bonnet and look underneath at what's working. The, 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 what's generally happening, and and this is virtually with all of them. I say, I'm not saying every single one, but all of them. Yeah? I mean they're after uh, economic, military political, social, and financial control. That's the general idea of every single one of them. Quite good. And well, I, I don't want to go into, I, ju I just say, I don't want to repeat myself. Almost. 
I said that's nearly every, single, every one. single one of them. So you don't want to pick one out which isn't. There's 99.999% which never buys. I mean, you're just wasting time. But that, 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 the, the, the point is, how do you juggle these religions with libertarianism? Well, I think you're wrong, Pat. I think there's only one religion that's keenly, really keenly interested in politics. Only one, and that is Islam. Now, if you did what I wanted to do, what uh, I wanted to do, and reversed it, reversed, uh, took uh, Mecca, the Mecca strips over and above the uh, Medina strips, then you'd have none. Can I you know, uh, the, the original uh, Christianity wasn't concerned with power to begin with, and Christianity throughout its history has uh, been uh, contemptuous of power. You're joking. No, I'm not joking. <laughs> can I just, can I just put you, can I just say something, but just very quickly. I mean, you've got, you've got bishops with dog collars and House of Lords. Um, That's right. If you go, you go back to the, to the First World War, where we lost a million soldiers, and the Germans lost, I don't know how many. I mean, the Germans had God is with us on their belt. I mean, most of them were, uh, well, about, about, about more than half were Catholics. A vast majority were, were Protestants, and as far as the English were concerned, most of them were Protestants. We all had priests sending them to sending them to their deaths. I mean, the idea yeah, so that what? the idea that the idea that the church using the state. No, 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 the no, 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 what you don't have is a bishop in the first 300 years of Christianity. There's nothing like a bishop in the... Now, yeah, well, uh, that, that, I'm might admit, have, that might have been the case. No, no, the no, look, look, I'm talking about the doctrine of Christianity. The doctrine of Christianity is not interested in politics. The doctrine of Islam is interested in politics. And as far as I know, the doctrine of Islam is the only religion which is interested in politics. All the other religions, as far as I know, are, uh, they, they, I mean, any religion will want to dominate, but it is not a principle of any other religion to dominate politically apart from one, and that one religion is Islam. Freemasons? Pardon? Freemasons? What about Freemasons? Well, what about they? Are they dominant? They're certainly not dominant. They're, they a secret, they're a secret society. But you have to believe in a religion. God to join them. Whether if you don't believe Maybe in a God, you you're not in there. Maybe you do. So what? They're a secret society. Well, they don't happened. dominate anyone. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, quite a lot of I mean, a lot of all religions have their secret sort of societies, not, including the Church of England. Look, someone in power, Stalin, wasn't uh, didn't rule in secret. Hitler didn't rule in secret. Even but Theresa May doesn't rule in secret, which he did. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's the <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, they did. Actually, they did rule in secret. But you didn't know no, what was they going don't. on. You didn't know what was going on in their chambers. You, you don't well, need you listen, to know what's going on. You, they're the bloody ruler. David, David, if you listen to the Nuremberg trials, you'll hear that the top Nazis didn't know what the hell was going on. So what? Is it relevant? Uh, isn't that ruling in secret? <laughs> isn't that ruling in secret? Was it, was it a secret that Hitler was the Chancellor of Germany? No. Good. That's all I went about. <laughs> uh, the Freemasons are not a political ideology. They may be a secret society, they may have rich people and so on. If they're secret, how do you know they're not a political society? Because politics is public. Politics well, is public. It has that in common with science. Not if it's secret. Politics, the main... A lot of... You know, the main thing I going to go on about the Communist Party the Communist Party was ruled by a, a bunch of uh, Bolsheviks. Wouldn't you call that a religion? You could call it a religion. You could call the Communist Party a religion. You could call you could uh, you, whether uh, a uh, socialism. Uh, the Mensheviks were certainly a religious. Out, uh, certainly had a religious outlook because they competed with Christianity. You couldn't be a Menshevik and a Christian. Mm -hmm. uh, now the Communist Party of Great Britain had many Catholic members. So they, uh, in that sense, they're not competing on a religious basis. Uh, but there are a lot of communists, I mean, Marx and Engels, for example, were dogmatic atheists, but they're atheists, so to the chance 
I mentioned earlier on of uh, Furbach and David Strauss. It was David Strauss and Furbach that converted Marx to atheism. So if it wasn't for that revisionist theology in Germany, Marx might have been some sort of Christian. Um, but anyway, uh, the uh, Freemasons are some sort of, they, they might be rich, uh, but they're not a ruling group. Otherwise, they'd be public. The politics is public. Uh, I mean, what I was going to talk about is the Communist Party. Uh, the Bolsheviks in the Communist Party thought that they could rule a bit like Lenin, except that they allowed the British role, road to social, socialism, which would allow democracy. What they overlooked is what went into the manifesto when the Communist Party of Great Britain was, to, uh, was contesting elections. Actually, ruled the roost rather than the backroom boys of the Bolsheviks who became barren. Secrecy is barrenness in politics. If you go back to the original, uh, go back to the, the early beginnings of Christianity, Christianity was only for Jewish people, originally, until Paul came along. Christianity, uh, that's right, I mean, yeah. Christianity was a Jewish sect. Yes. Yes. And so Paul, Paul came along and opened it up to the, the so-called right. so Gentiles. So called Gentiles, no, the actual Gentiles. <laughs> it, was a, it was still a very racial thing. Even up, even into the Middle Ages, uh, I mean, there were certain tribes, there were certain peoples who weren't allowed to be Christians, or weren't accepted, or certainly weren't accepted as Christians, certainly not in the Catholic faith, or, or any faith, any Christian faith, for example. But you were about 2,000 years before that, and it was extremely tribal. And this is one of the reasons why many tribes adopted their own religion, because they weren't accepted by any of these uh, Judeo-Christian uh, religions. I don't, think I, mean, Christi I don't think Christianity was very tribal, actually. The first 300 years. Well, the, the, the Romans... I don't think the, it was very tribal. The, the Romans devoted a lot of their time to wiping out religions, even after they became Christians. Incidentally, the reason they became Christians is because Christian soldiers would die more readily than non-Christian soldiers. And yeah. you, when they crossed the Rubicon, the battle over the Rubicon, when they adopted the Christian Caesar banner. Caesar crossed the Rubicon. Caesar when they adopted, I'm not talking about Caesar. When they adopted the Christian banner. Crossing the Rubicon. Yeah, yeah the, the, the Roman army. But when they adopted the cross at the time because, the, the, I mean, the Christians would die more readily than the non-Christians. Isn't that the case? No. I mean, you could say the same for Islam, incidentally. It was very successful because recruiting Islamic people meant they were more ready to well, die Hitler, for their lives. Hitler actually said, Hitler actually said that the, uh, Islam was the best position uh, because it instilled more discipline. Uh, and he was like the, Islam because they, they're more loyal. Uh, so there is there is a sense in which uh, Bolshevism also had a similar loyalty. I mean, the, uh, you know, these spies in Cambridge had tremendous loyalty towards uh, Bolshevism. Well, it is. And, you, and you get in James Bond films, you know, you get these uh, yeah. these uh, little women who have spikes in their shoes, and they they, they really are they really are going to. Uh, I mean, a lot of Bolshevism comes from a man called Nechayev, who called himself an anarchist, oddly enough. And he had a, 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 a catechism, which he said that only the revolution matters, nothing else in life matters. And this influenced Lenin quite a bit. He influenced him in his book, What is to be done? Uh, and uh, so uh, Nechayev uh, was a homosexual and he had uh, as his boyfriend, Michael Bakunin, who you might have heard of. Uh, and uh, and Nechayev influenced Bakunin a bit as well, but Bakunin wasn't as extreme as Nechayev. Yeah, well, these are small technical things. In the great scheme of things, they don't matter. These are ideas. No, these are, no, these, it's, it's ideas like Nechayev, which are very similar to some Islamic ideas and Bolshevik ideas and Nazi yeah. ideas. And they are ideas that come from long people like Nechayev. You know, they don't necessarily come from the masses. And I mean, one, have a lot of influence. Well, what, one back to, I mean, if you go back to, what, 1,600 years ago, when I, I'm pretty sure that, I mean, the Arabs 
weren't allowed to become Christians. As as, I know. Yeah. They, as, yeah, they, they as, weren't generally as, accepted. As, they certainly wouldn't. They were, certainly wouldn't do, progress do, 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 into, the, of Christians. In, 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 into the higher into the higher Christian uh, management. Well, there was no Christian management. You see, uh, when the councils of Nicaea met under Constantine to put forward the uh, you know, sort out four gospels from the many gospels, many other gospels. Uh, well, free and Islam draws on these gospels. It draws on what what they what the council of Nice uh, called Gnostic gospels. It draws on them. So many of these ideas in the Quran are from both Christianity and Judaism. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they're they're loose ideas. Now, uh, as I say, the Bible is is hardly a, a uniform book. It's, you know, the uh, New Testament has got twenty seven different books. And yeah. some of these books are quite different, you know, the epistles of John uh, and so on, they're quite yeah, different. But, but is it, I mean, isn't it, they don't the, the, all, the all these Judeo-Christian, uh, uh, Judeo um, you know, myths that you've got, I mean, you've got go back far enough to, to the Ju all the Judeo stuff, you, you, you had hundreds of different uh, tribes in that area. We've got the seven tribes of Israel, for example. We have they're, five they're tribes all, in Medina. They're all competing. Five tribes. They're, they're all competing with different. Uh, yes, Jim. They're all competing have we with been different. Have enough? <laughs> should, should we draw the full? Yeah, we've drawn it to an end. <laughs> yeah, we've drawn it to an end. We have. Thank you very much.